Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to another segment of Mornings in Elmira. I am joined by Ron. We are here at the Community Arts of Elmira. Thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to Community Arts. Thank you. All right, so why don't you just tell me about yourself? You know, you can start from wherever. Just give me the rundown. Well, I'm basically a retired art teacher. I'm on the board of directors here at Community Arts of Elmira, kind of a house artist. And my journey in art kind of started back as, teach as a teacher. In 1978, I had the good fortune of landing a high school position at Waverly, New York, one of the nicest little school systems you'll ever find, and uh, great people. And uh, I wound up doing a lot of murals for them, backdrops for stage sets, and uh, halftime shows, that kind of thing. Okay. And I'm a painter. So when I got to community arts, we've had mural projects, and so I naturally just kind of evolved into some of those. Yeah, and how long have you been a part of the community arts of Elmira here? Uh, since 2006. Okay. And what would you say, I mean, when did you start realizing that you wanted to be an artist? You know, did you have someone inspire you? Just what kind of led you? Know? I was always drawing as a child uh, throughout my whole life. And it was about the only thing I, I did halfway decent, so I just kind of focused on that. You yeah. just kept going with it? I just kept going with it, right. And right. what was it like being an art teacher, you know, helping students grow and you know, improve their art? Well, I, I did it for over 30 years, and I got to tell you, it was, it was a great experience. Uh, teaching photography, painting, art history, that kind of thing, watching them get into it and learning that they could actually do these things and be successful, um, and sharing the fact that we were all artists. I was an artist, they're an artist, and they'd watch me work, I'd watch them work, and we realized that it doesn't always come out perfect, but it's the process. Yeah. It's the process. Absolutely. And are you from this area originally? Yes. I uh, grew up in Corning, uh, went to CCC, Arizona State University, and then when I came back from out west, I landed in Elmira and I lived here for about 40 years Okay. Yeah. Awesome. and then I uh, transported myself to Waverly and back for those uh, three decades or so. Got yeah. it, okay, and what's it like seeing you know, your artwork here and you know where you grew up and you know especially on the wall behind us? Uh, it's, it's, it's fun to see it actually come to fruition, you, you know, it's, it's like a task, is the painting going to win or are you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very uh, uplifting to look back and actually see something that you've accomplished and I think all artists feel that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well I'm excited to learn more about you and all of the beautiful mur uh, murals that you have mm -hmm. here so thank you so much for joining me. You're very welcome. And stick with us for news and weather coming up after the break. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all back to Community Arts of Elmira and I'd like to uh, present to you the Langdon Park mural. This was a collaborative project that I was involved with, with another art teacher, and it took space over about two years. Uh, the project was a brainstorm of Cynthia Hill. She was a teacher at CCC and her students. They put the large three sheetrock sections on the wall, which covered the carriage house uh, entries that had been uh, cinder blocked over. Uh, her students painted the background trees and most of the sky, and at the end of their tenure, the foreground was empty and then I came in to finish the project. My goal was to populate the mural with people, make it a place. So I made it into a patio park to extend out from the cafe and <clears throat> it takes place in 1875 and we have of course Mark Twain and his family uh, to make it associated with of course Elmira. Uh, the mural is done in a technique called trompe l'oeil which is translation French to trick of the eye. It's one point perspective which gives it a, a sense of depth that you can walk into. So you don't just see a picture on the wall, you walk into the picture from the room. Uh, the mural takes place in three sections. Uh, the section on the left is populated with figures that I stole from many famous artists such as Thomas Aikens and Rembrandt. Uh, and it's again a 19th century setting where people are doing things that they would normally do in a park, reading a book, having a picnic. Uh, Cynthia Hill, uh, my colleague, is represented in, as the woman in the gold dress. So instead of signing the mural, we put ourselves in it. The center panel incorporates Mark Twain and his family, which would be Olivia Langdon, Susan Langdon Crane, and Mary Ann Cord, who is the maid cook. Uh, the figures in the center are composites from Civil War photographs that I put together, and I put myself in as the photographer. Uh, as I am a photographer, so it worked out pretty well. And over in the third panel, uh, I stole figures from Vittorio Reggianini, who was famous for painting scenes of suitors and bourgeois family room, living room scenes in the late 1800s. 
Uh, it also includes my neighbor's cat and uh, a few assorted figures that I collected from other photographs. To be quite honest, it came out much better than I thought it was going to. Uh, it, it was really, again, a collaborative effort, uh, but it, it really had a good, good start with uh, Cynthia and her students. They gave me a good basis to work on, and then they just let me loose with my perspective work and, uh, you know, composite figures from, uh, you know, various sources. And it, it kind of took on its own life, and it changed from month to month. And it probably took about two years to do it. I was researching what to do with this, and my inspiration for this was Raphael's School of Athens which is a high renaissance piece at the Vatican. And it is that severe one point perspective of all these characters receding into space. And I said, that would be perfect to give the illusion of walking from one room into another room. And that was essentially what I was trying to achieve.